innovative technology and gadgets, and you might have seen him in the exhibitor hall or at the gaming and gadget session. He knows a ton about this stuff, and I think that's what you're going to talk about. Oh, it's going to just pop on my cat. That was cool. He's going to talk about his cat. You're joking. <laughs> um, I'm going to let Brian start. Cool. Thank you. Can you guys hear me? Do I use the mic? Is this fine? All right. I'll just say, I'll assume yes. So, how many of you are familiar with what CES is, the Consumer Electronics Show? Cool. So, actually, I'm going to do it. Well, Technology nowadays, right? There we go. So it's, just, it's a consumer electronic show. It runs like the first full week of January every single year. It's in Las Vegas, and it's from Monday to Friday, and the exhibit's typically open on Tuesday. There's a Sunday night thing with a whole bunch of press conferences and things like that. You just gotta get a fancy press pad, and they'll let you right in. Um, CES is the largest event of its kind. There's about 3,600 exhibitors there and over 170,000 people. I don't know what the stats are with the ALA group, but I'm thinking that it's comparable, if not larger. Um, so it's, it's humongous, and 2.2 million square feet. And I've been, I'm not very good with visualizing spaces. So that's about 38 football fields. <laughs> These map books do not stick. So that's about 38 football fields, which is huge. Some booths, booths were the size of a football field. So this is the Intel booth, um, about half the size. And I had to ask one of the people that was setting it up, what do you do with all this when you're done? And the guy's like, well, some of us just throw it away, and other of us, like, we'll take it down and reuse it. Um, so they had, so the Intel booth changed colors throughout the day. Um, so they spent lots of money on their football size exhibit. Some booths actually had two floors. So if you were really cool and had a really fancy press badge, they would let you on the second floor to see other demos and do like hands-on and do meetings and things like that. But throughout the hall, they had a whole bunch of different technologies scattered everywhere across the 38 football fields that I unfortunately had to walk. Um, it was terrible, I hate walking. Um, so here's like another view of just the, the size and there's various halls, if you will, and just, just all you see is exhibits, and you don't even see the end, and you just walk up and down each booth. Very, very fancy and very, very intricate. Uh, this is actually a booth from uh, the Phillips uh, Universal Remote People. This is a they had like historical displays. Some some exhibitors had their stuff from when they first started off, and I was standing around some people, and they were all joking like, "Hey, I lost my remote for this. I'm gonna totally just rip it off the wall." And they had them bolted though. <laughs> uh, he tried, but he was there for like a few minutes, like pulling at it, and like everyone's like, what's he doing? He had too much to drink the night before. This is the Audi booth, um, which I thought was like one of the coolest looking booths they had. Uh, they had white floors and white walls, and they did a, like a pergola style. So when you stood in the right place, where it was where I stood, it was like a giant white box. Uh, and trying to capture it was kind of difficult, but they had car people there. Panasonic had a booth. And if you want to see the display of Panasonic, that's me standing in a corner of it. So here's one corner and looking down the other way. Humongous, full of all of their products that they're displaying everything. You can touch everything. Very, very cool. So what's it take to attend? Uh, Cost-wise, I actually lucked out. Last year, I actually had a friend that lived in the area. So I just bummed up with him and slept on the couch. But I encourage you guys to go. And it's cost, it's not cost prohibitive. Um, so the hotel nights, anywhere from 150 to 250. My initial, first time I went, I stayed at the Circus Circus and I paid like 98 bucks a night somehow. Um, I didn't complain after taxes and I was like, something went wrong. So I'll just stay quiet about it. Uh, the flight ranges from 200 to 400 in food. I probably only spent about $100 on food while I was there. Um, Cause they have a lot of free food things and snacks and stuff like that. And a lot of after parties. Um, we can talk a little bit more about the after parties later, but that's where I went to eat. I just, I'm like, all right, I'm really hungry, it's lunchtime, but there's a party later and they got food there. And that was my determination. Uh, it's actually free to register. Um, as long as you register, like, really early, like before September. Um, in order to attend CES, they say that you have to be in the technology industry. 
But that doesn't mean you can't go if you're a librarian. If you have technology in your library, you can apply. It might shock some people. I, I've had other librarians apply now, and they're going. And all they do is like, oh, I'm the technology librarian. And all they take is a, like a business card. So you send them a business card, you can actually take a picture of it and upload it to the website as a registration. And they go, great, technology, library, that's fine. We can't wait to see you. Um, and there's also, I didn't know this the first time around, I like taxied it, which was super expensive. Um, so there's actually like a $14 shuttle that's round trip. So keep that in mind if you do plan on going. Things to bring. So the first time I messed up and I was kind of not certain of what I was doing. Um, so I just brought a real nice camera and a power brick for my phone because I know that I'll be taking photos, tweeting, etc. Um, but I did bring really good shoes. I just brought dress shoes because I want to look fancy. Um, I destroyed those after like the day one of walking up and down the boots. So buy really good shoes. Like I saw people wearing gym shoes. Um, casual wise, you see people wearing like suits, ties, tuxes, the whole nine yards to like Iron Maiden and shorts. So <laughs> it ranges. So what I now I'll get to why I go in a second, but what I wore was something like this and gym shoes. Um, and that was like the average person what they wore. And the reason why I wanted to look nice was I wanted to actually meet founders and creators and leads of marketing at different companies. I wanted to talk to them about bringing their services, their products into library spaces. Something that most people don't do while we're at these venues. Most people are here to either buy or you want to be a distributor or kind of just play and write a blog about it. So you attend CES so you can kind of get the, on the forefront. See the stuff before everybody else does. You can play with the stuff before everybody else does. And then you got bragging rights to all your friends. Um, so I took in mind when I went, I understood, you guys familiar with the, these statistics? So I won't go too much into it. But essentially there was a research study done that they interviewed a whole bunch of people and they asked how frequently do you go to the library? 50, uh, 58%, 3% said, hey, we've been in the library in the last 12 months. However, there's a 38 missing percent where 90, 91% says the library's important to the community. So I go, what are we doing? Why are we missing 38% of those people? But I took that as a, as a statistic to add to the exhibitors. So number of exhibitors is 3,600 people. 53% of them said that libraries are important, which is a total of almost 2,000 exhibitors. So I know 2,000 exhibitors there, if I ask them would they like to work with the library, they're gonna go, yeah, I would, because I was there in the last 12 months. Then I knew that almost 3,300 exhibitors would say, I wanna work with libraries because they're important. So I used that as my reasoning of why I should attend. So what I did, I asked some very simple questions that I encourage everyone to do, because I don't wanna be the only one doing it, uh, walk up and down the booths, and if you see something you like, ask them, have you considered working with libraries? Chances are they're gonna go, no, don't you do books and stuff? <laughs> um, and and that's just, that was an overwhelming response. Um, and so then we talked about what else libraries are doing. You're all here because you understand that libraries are doing a lot more than just books. They're doing stuff with technology, and makerspaces, fab labs, building websites, things like that. So I would ask, what's your marketing strategy then for the libraries, the ones that were interested? And then we would start talking, like, no, we really don't have one. We don't know how to get involved with libraries. How do how does libraries want to buy stuff? Don't they have to buy it from Barnes and Nobles? Um, and so it was these very simple questions that we had a good dialogue back and forth about valuing of libraries. Can I, can you, does your product work in a library? Do you envision seeing it in a library? Um, and have you used libraries, would you consider using libraries as a beta test? The first time I went to CES, I asked this question when the CEO of LeapFrog was talking about, or the Hasbro was talking about their product. And the product development manager was saying how they struggle finding places to do research and development. It is super expensive to do, it's costly, it's time consuming, and no one really wants to do it. Um, and so I raised my hand, like, like this new guy, I don't remember who the heck is he? And uh, I was like, hey, have you considered, you know, doing that with libraries? Let libraries be the beta testers. All of a sudden, like, everyone like stopped talking, murmuring, all looking at me, and then like the, the, uh, the lady that was in charge of it was like, why, why are you here? And so, so we had this really good dialogue all of a sudden in the middle of the session about libraries, and then the rest of the evening, the other panelists that were coming up were including libraries in their conversation. It was a really cool experience that I like to go, oh, that might have started because of me. So that's why I go, and that's why I say you should go. So that's my, my soapbox, and I will talk about the cool stuff. So there's two main venues. There's the convention center, where most of the exhibits are. You're like your mainstream companies like Samsung, LG, your TV people. Um, it's very, very crowded there. It's packed with fanboys, like, I love Samsung, yeah, and Iron Maiden. 
Um, and so I, I, I literally, like, some people would just stand by the booth and just like, oh, LG, you're the one for me. And, uh, and it's really kind of crazy because you see, like, because I'll go up and down the aisles and I'll see the same guy just staring at the same TV, like, in love. Um, but they're the most expensive and most elaborate displays. I actually like the displays a lot in the expensive section, so I think that's really cool. The Venetian, however, is my, it used to be like my best kept secret because no one really went to it. Um, the Eureka Park consists of a lot of hands-on demos. Small companies that are trying to get their foot in the door are all at Eureka Park, all showing off their new idea, new product, new kickstarted idea. <coughs> Tons of startup companies. So, what are the main trends that I saw at CES? 3D printing, you guys want to talk about 3D printing for a few hours? <laughs> So there's a couple different new 3D printing technologies, so we'll just breeze through this. Um, this is a giant plotter, or a giant 3D print with a giant print bed. Uh, and I have, I'll post these links up so you can kind of check out some of the, the companies. Uh, there was a booth that was letting you scan yourself and then print yourself. But there was like a giant line, and I was like, I don't really know <laughs> This cool, it was a, it was like a dot matrix printer with C, me, C, me, C, and C um, that uses, instead of an X, Y axis and how the ball bearings work, they were three points and she moved up and down and from side to side. I thought that was different. Um, a dot <laughs> matrix printer. So are you familiar with a lot of laser jet printers? Print very precisely and that's like where you can get your image and your graphics. Um, so that's the quality of when they come out. Uh, so they're expensive, but it's, High definition quality. Um, so dot matrix printers, you don't need to sand, you don't need to put them in solvent. That's what it looked like after it was done printing, without him breaking away anything. They even made a 3D printer, and I'll tell you the low, low cost of this printer in a minute, um, that prints using paper. So you, you can take scrap paper if you want it, like color paper, things like that. You put it in this machine, and for about $20,000, you can print out some 3D objects. <laughs> On the cheaper end, um, I actually have one of their new product that comes out in May at the exhibit hall. Uh, Three Doodler was there with their new 3D printing pen. So they had some of their artists drawing in 3D, which I still don't know how they did it because I have no artistic ability. So that's 3D stuff. Drones. Tons of drone people. Uh, lots of drones with cameras, drones with sensors, drones with infrared heating things, um, drones with like controllers that with a video monitor on the controller. Uh, in some exhibits, you're able to drive around the, zone, the, the drones too and like crash into each other and whatnot. Uh, some drones were like military grade, so they were showing that this was like one of those iron wheels, and the drone was lifting it up and putting it down. And that's pretty cool. And they even had mini little drones, which would be fun to mess with your, your favorite animals with. <laughs> and for the ladies, if you wanted a pink drone, they had those too. They have every drone. And so you were able to test out drones and things like that, hundreds of them. Home automation, which I, I'm really into. Don't know if there is some library application involved with it, but home automation, I might have an app for my garage door now, and I can like open and close it and see like when I open my door last, and I don't know, it's easy for me, and I get kicked out of it, but trust me. So some of the booths at CES, they built houses for their exhibit. Literally, uh, this was a house Everything from garage door to kitchen to bedroom to bathroom, loaded with home automation stuff. So you can walk in, they have like big tablets around that you can like turn lights on and off with, open garage doors, start the stove, start the microwave, um, that people were just wandering through. So I'm like, that had to be expensive. And I had the house when you're done with it. Um, have you guys heard of Wemo? They're like the, they're probably like the most affordable uh, home automation system and they're trying to do everything. The issue with home automation, just as an aside, is that so many companies only can focus on a couple pieces. So like company A will only focus on appliances, company B will only focus on outlets, company C will only focus on lights. To do all of it is super expensive and they won't be able to focus on a uh, particular product. So it's really hard for a home automation house to come fully together just because there's so many different brands involved. And so no one has actually made a hub or a single access point that can talk to all of them. Um, they all use some, some new tech technologies called Z-Wave, but there's still those issues involved. Um, but what's interesting is that there's a whole bunch of 
companies I've never heard of, like very OEM oriented, uh, which is like some manufacturer in China that puts something together that looks like something else. So OEM manufacturer wise, there's a whole bunch of iPads, but they weren't iPads, they were called Pad Eyes, I think it was actually the name. <laughs> and it looks like an iPad, it works like an iPad, but it was built in China and then repurposed and you can buy it for like a hundred bucks. Um, and I'm not sure how that's all legal, but I was like, okay. Um, but tons of different home automation here. They even had uh, like things you can talk to, things like clean. This one, uh, clean uh, water trigger bond for you. So if you're in one of those like California areas where they have all the water watering restrictions, this device will like load up weather statistics and then when it's going to rain and if you need to water your lawn or not, and how much water it needs based off the last time it rained and when it will rain in the future. Uh, Samsung had some pretty cool things. They had um, like wash bins put inside of their washers and dryers now so you can like Use it as a slop sink. They had ro uh, this robot is not a cleaner. I asked, and they said it was a prop. The cool thing is the thing on the right, um, which st sticks through the window and it cleans up and down. And I wanted to find out, like, if I unplug it, like, does it still say suction to the wall? And I was told I can't test. So I'm assuming that if the power goes out, I don't think it sticks to the wall still. <laughs> And for those grill masters out there, you can get a robot that cleans your grill. They even have really cool products that you put food into like a canister, and you have you would basically replace all your uh, Tupperware or whatever you may use with the Neo. And then when you're at the grocery store, you can decide if you need more, buy more things, and what you can make based off of what's in your Neos. Very cool stuff, but also very expensive. Um, lots of wearables. So everyone seems to be getting into the wearable, like I want a watch that does everything type of attitude. Um, Apple isn't the only one doing it. There's, there was countless ones. So there was iHealth, which is unaffiliated with Apple, but was one of those OEM things. Uh, they even had people like working out the entire day, showing off fitness equipment. And excuse me, like you can hold on and it'll measure your calories burned and everything like that. It's like props to those people having to work out the entire day showing off wearable stuff. Uh, they even have a product called Muse, which is a headband that you would wear, and it would give you brain exercises. And very similar to like the EKG, it would measure how you're responding and how you're reacting, and give you uh, brain lessons and to better your brain. Um, it was pretty neat. And if you had children that you wanted to get into the wearables, you could do that as well. Everything from uh, clothes and shirts and, ba and band-aids, actually. Um, you slap a band-aid on your kid and it'll read you everything you need to know about them. <laughs> this was pretty cool, it's called Oku, and it's like this little square thing that you slap all over your face. And uh, it reads, <laughs> no seriously, you just rub it all over and just make sure your face is washed. And then it, it reads what kind of skin you have and what types of ointments and creams and if it's gonna be sunny tomorrow, if you need like special sunscreen and what SPF. And as you can tell, I really worry about my face a lot. So <laughs> I definitely am into one. Uh, they even had headband or uh, like bandana things that you can wear that will help detect if you have brain trauma if you're playing one of those hard contact sports. Literally everything you can think of is now a wearable. And then with watches, oh my god, I don't even like watches anymore. So I stood in line to win a free smartwatch, and this is why I don't like watches, I guess. And so me and like people around are all joking, like no one's gonna win this. They don't give this stuff out because everyone in front of us hasn't won. So I didn't win, you had to like spin like a, it was Vegas, so you had to spin a slot machine. Uh, didn't win, didn't win, the guy behind me didn't win, and we're like, see, no one wins. The three people behind us all won in a row. And that was like, like this sucks. Never. <laughs> um, and here's Intel's new that's coming out soon. Their their version of the iWatch, which looks nice, but probably very expensive. Uh, this is another thing that looked very similar to the iWatch with the, the sensors on the back. And here's like another OEM uh, watch company that reads and measures your health. Uh, open, oh, what does it stand for? It's like open something manufacturing. Original equipment. Yes. And so basically they'll take an existing product and they break it apart and rebuild it and re-engineer it um, to do the same thing. Like a knockoff. Yeah, knockoff. But I'm trying to be nice. 
<laughs> so other wearables. So if that wasn't enough for you, and you're still like, I really want to wear something, Brian, but none of that interests me. Uh, if you were in construction, or I don't know, you probably wouldn't be for your librarians, but if you on the side were like, I like to blow up buildings and stuff, you can wear a, uh, like a security guard vest, or if you have security guards in your, in your library, and it's like embedded with Bluetooth and other sensors, so like you can communicate wirelessly and, and find out signal information. Uh, smart helmets, so if you had motorcycles, you can have this helmet that gives you readings and a, and a dashboard and Bluetooth uh, answering ability. And you're like, you know, Brian, I actually have pets. You can get wearables for your dog. So if you have a GoPro, you can slap one of these bad boys out to your favorite loved one and find out what they do all day. <laughs> My dog, I'm pretty sure, just sleeps. <laughs> um, and I try to get a good picture of this. So there's this giant, here, I'll show you. This giant pod that you would stand in, and you can wear like an Oculus Rift and play fully immersive virtual reality games. So the guy in front, and this is only like 500 bucks, which actually was cheap to me, considering I thought it was a lot more. Um, it comes with shoes, the, the giant thing that takes up your entire living room, and uh, like a fake gun, and you wear like your Oculus Rift, and you can play virtual reality games and literally move around and run in place, because the way the thing works, it'll let you run and move and have full motion without running into your TV. So get rid of the couch, get it on me. Um, and if you like health equipment and virtual reality, you can now ride your bike and pretend you're riding up the side of Colorado Mountain. Uh, and they had, I don't know which one this one. Oh, uh, a yoga mat. So based off of your yoga position, because I do yoga as well, um, so I was really intrigued. And the lady in the view was telling me about how it measured your posture and stuff as you're doing yoga things, which I don't understand. So that doesn't do it for you. I got robots now. So lots of robotics, and let me see if this will play. Nope. So there's a video, this uh, picture here is a robot that can pick up a ball, target uh, for beer pong, and shoot the ball out into the cup. And then if it misses, it like recalibrates itself, and then does it again and makes it. Very cool, you do not want to play against that. <laughs> they had, um, and then more to toy wise, they had like little, ro uh, little dinosaur robots that you can program and control. This one, like, there's this little ball that you can shake and throw, and the dinosaur will go chase it and play with it. But if you didn't like fur, this could be your alternative. <laughs> um, this was a company called Spin Master that makes like giant robots using something very similar to like Kinect, um, and you can build robots that dance and move. This is uh, Moss from Module Robotics. So we're using tiny little cubes, you can put them together and build robots and things that work and interact. This was cool but expensive. They took um, like erector, erector sets and put them together with motors and gears so you can build your own robots using like erector set type of material. This was uh, called Ozobot, which is a programmable robot that uh, traces the lines you draw. Um, if you were in the exhibit hall, you've got a chance to play with this too. I'm gonna start breezing through this faster. So there's like a thousand more slides we gotta go through, sorry. Um, so computers, CDs, audio, and mobility. I slumped it all together because I don't really want to talk about computers at computers in the library. Um, so they're, they're making computers smaller. So these pictures here are gaming computers. Uh, so for those gamers in there that have like the Alienware computer that's as tall as me and as wide as me, feel free to make jokes. Um, they can now trump them down into something like this that's just as powerful. Um, giant display screens for if you were having advertising. Uh, audio, like 808, which handed out really cool bottle openers. Really, all librarians could go, check them out because they got all the liquor type stuff you need. <laughs> um, they have tons of curved TVs, and I don't understand the rage behind it. Um, so I like my TVs not to like be bendy. I think it's wrong. Um, but they have real nice, real cool displays and TVs. Super paper thin TVs. This is a TV at an angle. Uh, Sony had a really cool booth, and there's a video that I won't play, um, where they had a 360 de degree projector inside that when you were standing in the middle, they, had, they would film the concert, and you can see the backs of people's heads this way, and the front of people's faces when you look this way. It was super cool. Um, and just more, a lady, I think they had like a Lady Gaga looking lady out here somewhere as well. I think that's why I tried taking the picture and then she disappeared. So library ideas. So they also had some stuff that worked really well with libraries. 
So a company called MacLox that made like really cool display tablets or display ends that you can lock your tablets in so no one steals it. Uh, they had a whole bunch of book scans. I actually think this company was at the exhibit hall, maybe? It looks, I think so, they were here. Uh, a company called Tiddly Shape and Tiddly Counts teaches your younger ones how to count with rubberized shape that you push on an uh, iPad. Uh, inexpensive smart boards. Are you guys familiar with smart boards and smart tables? So this was probably an awesome expensive TV, but it was fully touchable and you can load up apps and stuff like that. So wouldn't that be neat to walk into a library? They actually had something that looks just like this up at the top of the, the Hilton by the coffee shop. Um, so you load up different apps like find your book if you want to check out or search for a card catalog. And you can load it up with your own programs. Uh, this is another version of it, like a smart table that somebody made. Um, so originally, smart table used to be the only ones making a table, and then Pixel Sense came out with their 10 grand table. So everyone just went back, back to smart boards or smart tables. Uh, this is a really cool app, and it's free that teaches you how to communicate in different languages. So there's some library things, and this I guess can be library things too. They're all crazy, right? Um, this is some this is some really cool stuff. So they had a mirror that you would sit down at, and you see yourself perfectly. And then you can pick what do you want to if you were getting a haircut and you weren't sure how you look with that hairstyle. Um, so you can add facial features to yourself. So this lady thought, I would like a beard and a mustache, and just want to see what it looks like. And in real time, as she moved her head with seamlessly, it looked like she actually had, because I was walking past the Rachel and oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and then I looked at the look at the what? And then I had to kind of figure it out from there. Um, because it looked perfect. Uh, somebody was Skyping remotely and they had this giant TV on a, on a robotic arm that would follow you around and move up and down, which is pretty cool. This was weird. They had like four exhibits with um, massaging beds and like people were waiting in line and to sit all sweaty in a massaging bed. Uh, and I was like, no, I'm good. But I was interested in getting my teeth cleaned. And so they had like this fancy dentist light that was cleaning your teeth for you. Are your teeth cleaner now? Oh yeah, it's very much whiter. Thank you. <laughs> and I had a buy one from my house at a low price of like 150,000. Um, now I don't need a dentist anymore. Um, so this was a product called SwiftPoint. Um, it allowed, it's like gesture-based computing almost, but with a single device. So you tap it and do different things to it and it'll interact with your computer. Like a mouse, yeah, on steroids. This is pretty neat. Uh, this is really cool. This is called Toby. So it was, so we're all familiar with touch base, gesture base, like move your arms. This one, you move your eyes. And simply by looking at the screen, the mouse moves. So you can look at the icon and like it'll open. And they were playing a game with, um, if you see here, it was like a shooting game, I guess. So you look at the red box and then you shoot it. I'm like, that's pretty cool. It hurt my eyes. Um, so I was like getting dizzy, so I'm like, eyes, move to the left. And then I'm like, no, no, just the eyes. Um, so they had, even the video was there, and they were showing off um, their software they use to autopilot cars and self drive cars. Here's another uh, heads up display car that some uh, Mr. DC made that has a heads up display on the glass. And when that was all done, I went to an award show. Um, and so most of these, products were at the exhibit hall and gaming guide tonight. Because I walked up to them and was like, do you like libraries? And they're like, we do, what can we do to help? Um, and so a few different companies won a different award at CES. Um, so Osmo, which is, uses your iPad and like a little camera lens and you can play games. So it, it blends physical to digital. So younger kids love tactile things, but they also like digital things. So this puts the uh, best of both worlds together. This was uh, called Loomy Kids, where it was a like a physics-rich virtual environment that you would load up on your app, and you would do physics things. So you could build like a Ferris wheel, and you have to like use physics and math to make one, and then your characters would go and play. And you build this world, so it's not like Second Life where you can just like get a house. You have to like do some math and do some physics with it. Um, this was real neat. It was a company called Creator Box that won an award. And it's subscription based. So very similar to like the, the bark box where you like dog biscuits or whatever for your dog in a box. 
or the Dollar Shave Club, where you get like shaving razors every month. This one will send you a crater kit every month. Um, and apparently it was very inexpensive, like 10, 15 bucks. You decide how you want to sign up and they'll send you a kit that you build as frequently as you like. Cool, so are there questions? I'll try to speed through this so we can hang out and talk a little. Any questions, comments, concerns, complaints? More cat photos next time? <laughs> Anyone have questions? Yes? I just want to say thank you. I came to this because IT is a school where